Terry Balkan. This is my new Deering model that Janet Gregg has made for me, which I'm extremely proud of. And it features a uh, red maple wood rim, and also the cut down tone ring, which makes it a lighter banjo. And it's also made of walnut, which will give you a sweet tone if you like a sweet tone. But if you really like the hard drive, like me, then this is a banjo for you. <laughs> Great. Can you play one of your hard driving songs? Yes, I can. Cool. Great. Sounds great, doesn't it? How about one of the more, the more quieter, delicate songs? Do you have something okay, there? Okay, uh, let's see. Uh... describe the tone and or the the difference in tone of this unique banjo from other ones you played okay I think the uh, the red maple has a lot to do with it. you know a lot of banjo makers and players will be talking about the tone ring and the tone ring is, is very important but a lot of times they kind of overlook the wood ring and I think this red maple gives this banjo a tone that if you didn't see me playing it you would think it was an older banjo that had been played for a while. And, and this is a new, days old, you know. So if it's sounding like an older banjo when it's this new, what will it sound like in two years? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So I really do think the red maple wood rail is the way to go, I think. For, for my kind of playing, that, that suits me very well, so. And how new is this banjo? That? How new is this banjo? Oh, this banjo was, has only been together since, what, about uh, last weekend? Yeah. Seven days ago, maybe? Yeah. And it's been on stage twice now. And uh, every time I go on stage, it seems to get better. So I keep going on stage a lot. It will get good. Won't it? That's great. <laughs> but it is a fine instrument. It certainly is. Any, anything you can say about reactions you've had? Anything anybody said to you here at the show about this banjo? Well, as a matter of fact, I was, I was at the booth quite a bit yesterday. I know you were busy with your uh, two-finger banjo class, and uh, Lawson was there, and like so many people were playing it and really liking it that he would have to take it from somebody to let this guy over here play it, you know. So, and I, I would ask him, you know, like this girl was playing I said, what do you think about it? She, she said, I love it. I said, well, you know, I use a wider space. She said, I didn't even notice that. She said, I really do like the banjo. And then this other guy was from British Columbia. And he puts on workshops, banjo workshops and stuff. And he said he loved it. So everybody that I've seen play it and got to speak with them after they play it, you know, I've only heard good things. And how do you set up? What, what kind of head tension, string gauges? Tell us about your setup. Well, when I, when I got the banjo, it was like an A. So I spun an A. That's, that's usually, uh, before I got this banjo, I was playing uh, a 62 bow tie that I think a lot of. I've had for a lot of years. And it always sounded better than A. So when I got this one, that's where it was at. And I've not really experimented because it sounded so good, just like that, that I really didn't want to mess with it, you know. Because if it sounds good and you start messing with it, usually it goes the other way, you know. So, But, you know, later on, I'm sure it's going to, you know, being so new that the head will come down. So. And I'm going to try, you know, play it a few days like that, but, and then I'll determine where it is. But I like 11 16th bridge, and I like a little wider spacing. And my action, uh, action is really low, and it's, you know, I don't like it too low because you'll start choking out the real sound of it. But if you can get it this low and not have any rattles or buzzes at all, I mean, it, it is just a real pleasure to play because you're not having to fight it at all. I mean, it's just... It's like it's up there and you got a mission and it's there to help you do the mission and you don't have to fight it at all. So that's, that's the way I would set one up. And uh, I don't know when, when, when you make them out there, I don't know, do you uh, 
if you know it's going to be a tall bridge, do you adjust the, like the, the back of the neck for that? Yeah, we said that we cut the heel appropriately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, that, that's why I can run such a low action. It would be hard without that to get this kind of action. You'd have to have it a little bit higher to keep it from rattling. You know, mm -hmm. it. But uh, that, that is just, to me, that is perfect action right there, right where it's at. Great. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed.